Good afternoon, you raging rump roasting riggers. I'm Blake, and this is Pop. Uh, <laughs> what's up, you willy wankers? Episode 100 of Grunt Speak Live. And we have a guest today from uh, one of our uh, supporters wants to be on. And uh, well, not a, not just a supporter too. The uh, the creator of Clarence the Cop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, Billy Von Baum, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. What's up, my riggers? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question for you. That that deep fake thing that you do for Joe Biden's voice. Yes. Quite. Fa- How did you? Is there some sort of algorithm, some program, program that something? I need to download here? Ancient tiny secret. Oh no! Damn it, man! I was hoping to get the. We take scoop. we take voice. We put it through very secret uh, means. Mm-hmm. We send it to China. Oh no! They mix it up for us, <laughs> and they send it back. All of a sudden, it's Joe Biden. Did you did you not get the memo? They're probably doing the same thing for the White House. China is asho. Well, have you seen that that crazy holographic technology? Uh huh. You know, you walk in there, he walks into a booth, and then like full 3D projection rendering shows up in this little I'm cubicle thing. I'm convinced he died about. I'm convinced he died about ten years ago, and this is kind of like an animatronic that you see at like Disney World <laughs> or a cyborg. <laughs> cyborg. I always wondered what happened to the animatronics from the King Kong ride. <laughs> Son yep. Bitch. There you yeah. go. Yeah, he's a cyborg. He's uh, his failing brain is in a in an android body. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and you uh, actually sent another video, a little follow up here. Apparently, uh, someone who's definitely not Joe Biden has a uh, has a question for Pop or Clarence. I yeah, should say. He's a little upset. A little upset. All right, let's check it out. Hey, um, uh, what's your name? Uh. Uh, Clarence? Hey, Clarence. It's your old buddy Joe. I'm just, uh, reminding you that Hunter never got the, um, money. That, um, you know, you know, the money the thing that was marked for the big guy. Um, still haven't gotten it. So if you could, uh, take care of that be great you know so we don't have to go looking for these uh guns at the bottom of the lake somewhere Hmm? you know about those yeah you know what i'm talking about where they from lake michigan huh yeah is that where they are we'll we'll find them and then we'll charge tax on them that's how things work so uh make the payment there clarence you remember what this was for it was that thing you know, the, the thing of the thing. You know the thing. So, all right, um, I got to go. So, see you. Brandon Nero. <laughs> Jose El Brandon Nero. <laughs> Listen, you better, you better take care of Jose. Totally Jose, looks legit. be very, very angry if you don't pay Mr. Mr. Brandon Nero. Mr. Jose, <laughs> andre, andre, epa, epa. You better pay him in a hurry, man. <laughs> I wonder if we could start like a, uh, a meme. Let's go Brandon in Spanish or something. Yeah, I'm be, sure that there's probably some Mexicans down there already chanting that. Uh, Mexicans? Yeah. Mexicans or Mexicans? Yeah. Well, if they're, uh, if you're a Democrat, they're Mexicans. Yes, that's yeah, true. Gotcha. I gotcha. It is what it is. So today is just going to be a very, uh, very loose uh, discussion, not to be confused with your ex-wife, allegedly. Allegedly. You're going to get me sued, bro. Sorry. I, bro. I don't need that kind of trouble. Oh, oh, I didn't right see that one coming. <laughs> the key is to wait for a distraction. Oh, my God. That's what magicians call prestidigitation. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's one of those words that's left over from my granddad. Wah, wah, wah. So, Billy, man, uh, tell us uh, how you you know came to be a creator, came to the Red Pill. What's your story, man? Oh, you want the origin story? Yes. A long time ago. <laughs> Hopefully it's better than the first Venom movie. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll, you know, strap in. We'll go right through my divorce. How I got, uh, yeah. How I arrived here. All right. Let's do it. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to enter a new term into the, uh, manus manosphere, such a stupid name, uh, (laughs) lexicon. My ex-wife, she Shawshanked me. Oh, 
Ooh, yeah. Well, you got oh, thrown in that? prison. You got you thrown in prison and shit? Or? Oh. Had to cover That's... up your escape plan with Raquel Welsh? Let's let's go back to the beginning. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So I met my wife, uh, 2000, year 2000. I'm, I'm approaching my, uh, I'm in my late 40s right now. Um, and she was a very good looking woman, blonde, blue eyed. I mean, eyes like those eyes. Uh-huh. <laughs> they go lifeless was... when she bites you. <laughs> and what I didn't like, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't, you kind of knew a little bit about women's, how they operate and whatnot, but it was always kind of like, oh, you know, uh, women. My, X was she was a party girl but she was a smart party girl and uh you know is there such a thing this there is actually sounds like an oxymoron Um, (laughs) it does doesn't it but you know she was very smart she was in uh she was an accountant hedge funds Uh uh, mutual funds worked with multi-million dollar accounts and whatnot i'm in engineering I uh, worked for a transportation company. Uh, I didn't at the time, but I was in engineering. I gotcha. I gotcha. And uh, so we just, we kind of. So you're not making chump our, change. You're, you're making okay money. I was doing, I'm making okay money. Okay. And, and hopefully I was just kind of starting out in it at that time. I was in my late 20s. So you're, pay, you're, you're in, at your job paying your dues. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Met her and she was four years younger than me. She was starting out in her career. She was doing great. We were, we had, we were a good fit and she was smart. And, you know, I like smart women, somebody who can match me, uh, in uh, my, my thinking and whatnot, which I would suggest anybody, if they're going to be with somebody to try to find somebody who's within their wheelhouse. If you go, you know, people who are dumber, I know Aaron Clary makes that book, uh, like the curse of the curse of the high IQ, high IQ or something. If you're with a person who's like 30 points (laughs) dumber than you, uh, it's just, it's not good. (laughs) Yeah. So I agree. I, I, I hear on that. I mean, I've, uh, I got a relatively high IQ myself, or at least I used to before I got blown up. So, yeah, there was a lot of women I used to date that were just, I would just date them because they had nice tits. <laughs> and I got bored with them and I left. Well, <laughs> happens. So I totally understand. So she, yeah, she was a party girl and I didn't recognize that. I didn't, I knew that they were like kind of, you know, women who were, you know, they, all like right, to, so they like to go dance and all this. But you I didn't say know party were, girl. Are you saying like she used to just go hang out and party once in a while, or did she go she, to? Well, the, did she, she go? To, a, yeah, she went to the rompus room a lot. <laughs> the rompus. She room. had a friend, uh-huh. and I'll get to this friend. You okay. Know, they say that you know, you are the company you keep, right? So her friend was she was just crass and just uh, she was a lawyer actually, uh-huh. but she oh, was a whore, uh, whore of a girl. Yogurt gargler. I got it. Yeah. But, you know, my ex would be like, oh, I'm nothing like her. We, you know, we connect because we're two totally different people. You know, I b- bought oh, into huh. this line of shit. God. Yeah, that totally. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. okay, okay. I've totally. heard that before. I've heard that before. Yeah. Oldest trick you know, in the she, book. Yeah. She was a nun before we met, apparently. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, so we got together, worked out great. Like, we were just... Uh, firing on every cylinder. It was great after, for three years or four years. Yeah. So we got married after a year of seeing each other. Great wedding. We had a wedding on the beach, uh, had our honeymoon in Hawaii. Like uh, everything was wow. just, it was awesome, right? Sounds for expensive, first, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, yeah. Uh-huh. So the first three years, everything was just I, it's perfect. Aw- it's awesome. The perfect relationship. I'm like, I'm feeling like the luckiest guy. I really scored. Look at her. She is so fucking hot. Yeah. Blonde. Tan. She loves me. She, she loves different. me. All this shit. I, I told you. I totally bought that whole line of Disney thinking. So you have you the know. hook, line, and sinker hanging out of your mouth. Hook, line, and sinker. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, totally. listen uh, for, the, for the 
the men out there in the audience, this is a real thing, and it happens all the time. Yep. And something very similar happened to me as well. It's called love bombing. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to you know get the message out to you guys out there in the audience that this is serious shit, and the chances of you running into it are extremely high. Yeah. Yeah, love bombing is one of the ways they get you. They shower you with affection and you think it can't possibly get any better than this then they get you into a position where they feel like they can control you and then they slowly start to dial back all that stuff so that you change your behavior to get it back yes did a whole video about it you're the mexican jumping bean on a hot plate at that point <laughs> all right continue on man sorry for disturbing you yeah. no no okay and I, I also felt that she was you know playing uh, a role that wasn't really her. She was really the party girl pretending to be the housewife. She wanted the, she wanted the big, we bought a big house, four bedroom house. We had to go on trips. Everything was great. She cooked dinner, all this shit. And then it started to decline after the, about the fourth year started going into, you know, a bit the of a decline. I got gotcha. you. But it wasn't too bad. We're still doing good. And this is around the time that Facebook and MySpace start coming around. They, they weren't around in the early 2000s and whatnot. It's about 2006 or so. Yeah. Yeah. MySpace started coming into its own around like late 2005, but it didn't really get big until 07, I think. Somewhere yeah. around there, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm, and then we're dating no. ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we are. So then uh, her friend had kind of was in the background, but it wasn't really, she wasn't really a problem. You know, they uh -huh. go out sometimes, you know, but it wasn't really. And there would be clues every once in a while that, you know, you just like, oh, you know, whatever. It's just people being, you know, she's just having fun, going uh -huh. out with the girls, all that bullshit. Been there, done that. And, yeah. Well, you know, one big sign girls to me that I should have been like, what's going on here? They went to a concert, uh, some country music guy. And they got backstage oh, and she's shit. showing me the pictures and she's like sitting on like the, the lead singer's lap. And I'm like, huh? Is her skirt hike? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like what, what's going on? Like he had his arm around her and shit. I'm like, what's going on there? She's like, oh, we were just having fun. Yeah, yeah, oh, and yeah, my yeah. friend, she, my friend blew the, the freaking guitar player on the bus. Yeah, and I'm I like, totally really? just watched. <laughs> Dude. Dude. I was like, no, oh no, I was, God. I was, I was in the front of the bus, you know. Like, oh yeah, huh. yeah. You know. Can't sit back in the back of the bus. That's for Rosa Parks. Wow. Because yeah. uh, listen, I, I, I worked as security for Guns N' Roses when I was in the Ranger Battalion, as a part-time gig when they would play their uh, at the Tacoma Dome. Dude, I bet you could smell the chlamydia coming off of that job. Dude, <laughs> it, like literally. Um, women were coming through into the backstage area and you know the area where the um musicians set up and, and tear down after the show yeah dude it was fucking sodom and gomorrah in there it was insane gonorrhea oh. <laughs> wow it, dude it like it was unbelievable oh. you know unbelievable uh, okay so yeah so you definitely didn't get the whole story or, or did you get it later? No, I, and I just kind of, you know, my, I was looking through the world in rose colored, colored glasses, everything. Oh, no, we're still good. Everything's great. We have the great life. Look at our life. Everything's she awesome. Yep. We're the power couple. We're, she's doing great at her job. I'm doing great. I, I got a new job at that point. I was doing awesome. And, uh, and then her friends start coming, you know, his friends start coming back around again. And I think her friend was like jealous because her friend never, because she was such a whore, she never had a good solid relationship with a guy. It was always be like, you know, two, three months at best. And, you know, they kick her to the curb. So uh -huh. her friends start coming around more and more and more and more. Mm. And one thing that really drove me crazy, the two of them went out and they got tattoos, tramp stamps on their back. Oh, dude, of, no. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. Fairies. Fa like, you know, one, two fairies on both their backs, like representing, oh, there I am and there she is. Oh, boy. And I'm like, oh. And, you know, you'd be, I'd be, 
you know, doing her from behind. And I got to look at those goddamn <laughs> tattoos. And to me, it was like a big fat F you to me. I was like, oh, that's exactly what that was. Goddamn tattoos. Fucking look, tattoo. If you're married and your wife goes out and gets a tattoo and doesn't tell you about it or ask you about it. She got it for another man. Either Well, she might have got it for another man, but she definitely does not respect you. Yeah. Well, any oh, yeah. Totally. any physical changes that come about that you didn't specifically discuss beforehand that, that change her appearance, they uh, that, that means it's usually there's because there's somebody else in the picture that she's trying to impress and it ain't you. Yeah. Or she's mm. out penis shopping. Oh, well, same, same, same thing. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. So, sorry for you know. That's good. okay. So I'm then just, the two we, of them decide they need to take a, a girl's trip. Oh, okay. here we go. You, here we right, go. right there, you should have said, fuck yeah. this, I'm out. And I'm like, okay, sure. And they go off to the Bahamas. Uh, We're going to the beach, having fun. Girl's trip, yay. Oh, boy. So then they, yeah, then they came back, and she was acting all weird. And I'm like, so how was the trip? Uh, it was okay. We didn't really do anything. We just kind of on the beach. I'm like, you're just off. Like, something's not right here. She went behind the deli counter to see how the sausage is made. (laughs) Well, so after about two weeks of just, you could just tell. Like, when you're living with somebody for enough time, you can just tell when something ain't jiving here. Uh Uh-huh. So, you know, I hate to admit it, but I I went and I got a key logger. I put it on her computer. Because she'd sit there and she'd be typing away on her computer. I'm like, who are you typing to? She's like, oh, just my friend. Like, you can see Pop something. nodding over there. He's totally never done this, by the way. <laughs> I'm Dude, like, that, you're, you're spot on, man. You're spot on. So I put a key logger on. Her. Yeah, yeah. I get into it. I, you know, she logs in, and then she goes off to work. And I'm like, oh, I got to see what's in here. What's in her? I get onto the email, and the two of them, they're talking about how they went at the club, and they're dancing with all these guys. The ones her friends sending her, oh, I put together a, a picture album online here just for us it's private here's the password i'm like oh i gotta see this gotta see this. i go in there and it's like oh my god mm. it is like like sodom and Gomorrah. like dudes just all over them her boobs are like you know she's uh putting them out on display i'm like fuck dude, what the fuck and so i didn't say anything well right there when you discover that i can almost tell you i you know it's literally like you get bent over and they rip your heart out through your asshole. Or your wallet. I've been there. I've been there. So, I, first, I want to say I'm sorry this happened to you. Oh, it just, it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's it a was, painful It was so long thing. ago now. And, and as my story will progress, okay. you will see I am far over this, so far over it. Okay. Anyway. So I didn't say anything. I wanted to see what was, you know, I wanted to, you know, keep uh, tabs on her discussions because she'd be talking to her friend and her friend's like, oh, we miss having good time. We had such good times when you were single, like t- total, like in her ear, you know, the devil in her ear. You know, we need to be, we need to be Wonder Woman and, you know, captain marvel and just go out there and slay queen all this bullshit wow yeah and you know uh finally i got to the point where i just I couldn't hold it in and uh, we were we were in a uh in the car we were going uh going somewhere and she could it wasn't somewhere where she could get out of the car and like run away or anything else. we're in the car and i'm like i gotta say it, gotta say it. i was like so that trip to the bahamas oh here we you go wanna talk, <laughs> you want to tell me about all those pictures of those guys you're dancing with she's like (laughs) nice (laughs) totally like totally caught her off guard and then she was pissed like how did you get on my computer and big fight huge fight oh yeah because it's not about what she did at that point she twists it to be about you invading her privacy right Eh, right. how dare you So at the end of the conversation, uh-huh. you know, it came to, I, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with my career because, you know, she had a high pressure career. She was working uh, these long hours. Uh-huh. She's making really good money. But, you know, apparently she wasn't happy. She was saying, 
you know, I need to be, ha- I need to have more fun. I want to go back to school and I want to, Oh God. Sure. Yeah. Oh. I want to get my master's. I want to be a teacher. Then I'll be happy. I could have off the summers. Everything will be great. It'll be just like old times. Oh, Everything yeah, totally. will be good. Yep. yep. Yeah, never mind I, the fact she's going happened. back to the dick buffet. <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened in the Bahamas. I didn't sleep with anybody. You read the emails. No. You see, it wasn't me. It was all her. I. You see, she didn't say I was sleeping with anybody. I wasn't sleeping with anybody. I totally bought into it. I totally got sucked yeah, She didn't back sleep into with it. them. She left their room after all right, she was so, done. Uh, let, let's just let's just assemble this for the viewers. Yeah, you get you get married, you get lum, mm-hmm. love bombed, you're head over heels for this chick, and she decides she's going to go uh, do this, start doing the girly stuff, and actually goes on a vacation out of the country with uh, her whore friend, <laughs> and uh, uh, then you find the pictures, and she's somehow able to gaslight it and convince you that everything is hunky dory to keep you going moving forward is that where is that accurate that is accurate okay so that's how they do it man because if you can't prove it, mm-hmm. it like prove it with you know i mean it, you always go with your gut dudes because i've been there and, and what drives you nuts is that you can't prove it but you know you're right but she will make you feel like the bad guy for ever questioning it, no matter how much proof you have, if it's not conclusive. Yeah, and for all the guys out there, do not do not feel bad if this happened to you. All right? You, if this happened to you, you're just a normal guy, and you got hoodwinked by the, you know, the, the hoo-ha. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. It happened to me. It's happened to uh, it. Mm-hmm. Most guys who get to the age of 40, it's happened to them at least once. Yeah, and usually it is the friend who either resurfaces or, or or the friend who gets divorced. Yes, because they they want to go back out and pretend like they're twenty again. Yeah, and like in my situation, I got wounded. Okay, and you know, in woman's nature, the man becomes, you know, hurt or loses his job. They just they draw a red line through your name. Expendable. And you know that happened. And then she went back to school to get her bachelor's, and after that, it was it was off to the races. No, she wouldn't go to go back to get a bachelor's degree. She went back to actually hunt for bachelor's. So you just misinterpreted it because you're dyslexic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She was honest all along because she different. She loves you. She's different. Man. <laughs> man, I was such an idiot looking back on it now. Wow, wow. Hey, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you? Yeah, laugh? I know, I know. We've all been we've all been done. We've all done stupid shit. All right, so continue on. Sorry for disturbing you. Oh, that's okay, because we're we're gonna we're gonna start going down the hole. Here. Oh, yeah. The I think hole. It's been bad this far. Whoa, just you wait. So she convinces me. She just, you know, we married. We're married. You know, we just need to get. We'll get through this. We'll get over this hurdle. She's unhappy. I'm, you know, and I'm thinking I'm here to support my wife. I, I love her with all my heart. You know, I bit, I bought into all this bullshit bought it all i'm like i'm here for you Uh let's do this you go back to school we'll make you happy again oh my god so she quits her high paying job now we only got one salary coming in Mm. and goes back to get her master's which takes about it took her about a year and she was doing a little part-time to kind of you know so that we wouldn't uh be you know we had to cut back on some stuff but Uh, you know hey i'm here to support you so she gets her degree. She gets a teaching job. Everything's, hey, you know, it's kind of like, oh, it's kind of going back. It's good again. But that friend was still kind of hanging around in the background. You know? Okay. That fucking in friend. The, yeah. That, gotcha. that friend, man. Oh, my God. So she supposedly had to go on a trip to something for the school she was with up to Canada. This was in like February of... 2011 i want to say okay and she goes on this trip she comes back who do you know and then she was kind of a little weird but like we we're coming up on our ninth wedding anniversary at that point oh you're married and that long you married that long Ooh, okay <laughs> yeah yeah and uh we're like we're going on this trip everything's going to be so awesome we we're going to aruba it's like this is you know, we've had our we've had our tough times, but we're you know things are things are coming back around. 
Different. Got this new job. You're, you're doing good. Everything's great. So she took another trip up to Canada uh, back for supposedly school again. So she said, okay. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, Hey, you know, I, I trust you explicitly at this point. Cause she wasn't with her friend. She didn't go with a friend. It was just supposedly through work. So we take our ninth anniversary trip to Aruba and she doesn't want to do anything. Like usually we're active. We go like scuba dive. We'll go check out the town. We'll go, uh-huh. we'll go do stuff. She doesn't want to do anything but lay at the beach. Just sit at the beach, lay in the sun, do nothing. And soak like, up all on, the eyeballs that are on her. Let's go exploring. Let's go have fun. Nah, I don't want to do that. I'm, just, I'm not in the mood. She's telling me. So I'm like, I need to go do something because I don't want, I, I'm not a beach guy that much. So I want to go, I, I want to go have fun. I want to go explore. So I go rent a Jeep. I go now, if I don't know if Aruba is still like this, but at the time it was one side of the island is like civilized. The other side is uh, all uh, wild. And there's like an old fort up there. And then you go down to this, this uh, pool, this reflection pool or some kind of shit. But it, you need a four-wheel drive to get through this stuff. Uh-huh. So I go rent a Jeep. I go take this trip. And at one point, I was totally off-road. And this Jeep didn't have a spare tire. And I'm going over, like, rocks. They're, like, the front ends up in the air, the back <laughs> ends. I'm like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to get I'm gonna get stuck out here. I'm going to die out here. I get to the top of the island. I'm looking out. You can see from end to end. And I'm like, wow, this is really something. And I see there's a storm out in the distance. And I'm like, wow, I better get back. And little did I know, like, this was like a precipice of like the storm that was coming for, for my life. Done, <laughs> yeah. done. It was, done. It was, it was for, yeah. it's called foreshadowing. Yeah. It's like, batten down the hatches. Here comes yeah. a storm. It's coming on into you. You're going to so get said, fucked. Well, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I said, well, I can't go back the way I came because there's just no way I, I'm going to fall off a cliff. So uh-huh. I saw in the distance there, these wind turbines. I'm like, I'm going to go that way. I went down. It was this great trip. That was like amazing. I got through this. I felt amazing. You know, amazing. Yeah. I got back to the, the hotel. Oh, and along the way, I found a, uh, a coconut and I carved our initials into the corner. Yeah. I love you. Oh, Happy no. ninth anniversary. Bro. Oh. Here, I gave it to her. Here, look what I got. So this is here. how you know he's keeping it 100 because I wouldn't have admitted to that shit. <laughs> no, look, I, I got you. Look, when I was married, I did stupid shit too. Oh, I was in it to win it. Oh, yeah. Totally. If I give you some flowers, will you touch my penis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, keep going, man. Keep going. This is getting good. How about just a fingertip? All right, so you got the storm rolling in. You know, storm and, rolling in, okay. and you know, and another big thing that should have been like an indication is on this trip. This was our ninth anniversary. We didn't have sex the entire time. It was always oh. like, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, I didn't. I don't. My I didn't put in. She had like a, one of those ring things. I didn't put in my ring this month. Ugh. Like it was all like excuses. excuses Busted excuses. on her trunk. Yeah. I wouldn't care. Married nine. She years. no. She she. Well, she she was selfish. She didn't want to have kids. Oh. Oh, there you, that's yeah, another, I don't want that's my body another red racked. flag. I don't want, yeah. You know, it was all about her, all her career, all this shit. Mm-hmm. So we get back on a Sunday. We had a concert on Tuesday we were going to. It was great. We went to his concert, uh, Stone Temple Pilot, Scott Weiland, when he was still alive. I met Scott Weiland twice, actually. There's no, there's no, like, mystery of why that guy's dead. He is, was a drunk alcoholic. <laughs> I mean, he was fucked up great singer i love stone Temple pilots but yeah, yeah. we were right up front and it just had it was like things are coming but like i'm feeling like the energy of what our relationship used to be okay. so go home go to sleep get up wednesday morning now she's this is during the summer so she's off from work because she's a teacher now and kiss her goodbye love you i'll see you tonight roll out the door, go to work. Now, this may sound like what I'm going to say next. It sounds like something out of a movie, but I swear on my life, this is exactly how it went down. I come home as I'm pulling in the driveway. Her car is not there. I'm like, oh, she must be at the gym or 
you know, maybe out shopping, get out of the car. As I'm getting out of the car, I look at some getting a phone call from her. I'm like, huh, pick up the phone. I'm like, hey, where you at? You know, what's going on? I'm putting the key in the door, opening the door. She says, I'm just calling to tell you that our relationship is over and I've left. Okay. And I'm like, what? And she's like, this is just the way it had to be. And, and she hangs up. And you never saw it coming. There, you know, looking back, yeah, I, there was signs, obviously. Uh-huh. We, but I know, but, but I mean, at if you the heard time, what I just was all saying. At, at the time, you're just like rose colored glasses. Yeah, Everything's great. You know, some things are a little weird and whatnot, but yeah, you know, you're blindsided. Yeah, I've been a lot of guys are the same. It happens the same way. Yep. I did not see this coming at all. I okay. open up the door and it looks like a tornado had blown through. Stuff missing, like the couch gone. Wow. The freaking the dining room table gone. I got run up. I'm where's my dog? With I'm calling for my dog. Oh no, no dog. Oh. I'm like, what the fuck? That brings I, I go memories. I go upstairs. I mean, it looked like just a tornado had blown oh. through my house. Yep. The bed's gone, her clothes are gone, like uh paperwork's gone. I'm like, what the I'm I'm calling her back. Write the voicemail, write the voicemail, write the voicemail. I'm like, holy shit. What, what is going on? Like, I just, you, like, how you process this? You've been with somebody for, this with her for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, and she's doing this over the phone. She uh-huh. had all day. She had all day to do this. Well, and I didn't see it coming. All right. Women, when they do something like this, most of the time, it's not a snap decision. They literally, oh, this was planned. Literally, they make the decision four to six months prior. And then they meticulously execute that plan. Oh, yeah. And this is where it even gets better. This because I'm talking about, you know, getting Shawshank here. Yeah. So I call up my buddy. I'm like, dude, you're not going to believe this. Yeah. I like we, I need to talk. I like I'm, you know, I'm in like beside myself. Yeah. Yeah. Come over. Come on. So I go and I only got a quarter tank of gas. So I go to the gas station, put my my bank count my bank card in do 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 comes back transaction denied denied oh. i'm like what no I put it back in do 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 transaction denied mm. i had one of those like spielberg zoom in moments like oh oh she took I, all my money i ran in i put it in my card in the atm give me the balance give me the balance dollar 27 wow. i'm like oh Oh, no, this can't be right. This can't be right. Put it back in. Balance. A dollar twenty-seven. Wow. I go, okay, well, let me check savings. In the savings. Balance. Zero dollars. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? How much was there? There was a <laughs> there was a good amount. Okay. So good, enough. Enough. So we're there talking thousands <laughs> and thousands of dollars. Oof. No, we're talking tens. Oh of God! Oh, shit! All right, all right. This, yeah, okay. So, I'm like, all right, I get it together. Let me. I gotta get gas. Now, I'm not big on credit cards. I only have, at the time, I only would keep two credit cards. I'm the same way. Emergency. I'm the same way. She Put maxed one them out, didn't, she, didn't they? <laughs> one card in. Transaction denied. She I'm maxed like, them out. Holy fuck! Put bitch. the next card in transaction denied i'm like fuck my life now okay wow let me just say this people will say well how did you put yourself in such a situation that you didn't know what was going on with your finances and i get that i totally take responsibility i totally know i fucked up but in my defense this You're was married, a woman and you love this woman who- I was married to her uh-huh. she was a goddamn accountant who worked with millions and millions of dollars I'm not going to, I know cars. I'm not going to say, Hey, go change the oil. You know, uh-huh. I just, I handed her over my total finances. Like, and she did great with them. She oh, to right. my total disadvantage. She totally took advantage of this. And that's, that's another thing we need to do a Ooh. video on and uh, what uh, oh. relationship self-defense. Yeah. No joint accounts. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> when I was married, yeah. I did have a joint account, but I also maintained a separate account. So, like, when I got divorced, you know, and I lost everything, I still had, like, 
eight or nine grand to get by for a little while. So I wasn't like caught without nothing. Was that what you used to pay off all your debt? No, no, I used my. Well, that was afterwards. I used the stock trade account to pay off all the debt. And because they usually assign the debt to the dude. Yeah. And I wasn't playing those games. So I paid everything off and I paid my attorney and it broke me. I was like, I was literally, once I ran out of that money in that account, I was homeless living out of my car. Yep. It happens to men all the time. It sucks. Absolutely correct. And it, w- whenever it does, you do have to take responsibility for your end of things. Yep. But you and learn. I, if, you, if you If you were not afraid to take that responsibility, you learn. The problem with the other side of the scenario is they think that they're making out like a bandit, and they don't have to change because it was all your fault. Wait. And that's why you play the long game because in the end, yeah. all of the but that bad karma is just going to come back and bite her right in the ass. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Do you need to take care of Super Chats or anything? Uh, I got no. more. There's more. This Let's time. go on for another 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, well, at uh, 1245. We'll take a break. All right. Okay. So I talk to my friend. He calms me down. I go back home. Luckily, I had a, a guest room with a bed. I could sleep on the guest room bed. And the next day, I go to the bank. And, and then I had uh, another realization another Spielberg uh, zoom in moment that my check was going to be deposited into our joint account automatically. Oh God. On Friday, this was Wednesday. It was going to be deposited on Friday. I'm like, Holy crap. I called my, my work. I took off work the rest of the week. I called my work. I'm like, you need to stop that. And they're like, it, we can't, it's already, it's already been executed. There's no way. And I'm like, Holy shit. So I got, I waited at, on uh, uh, Thursday night to 12 o'clock, sit there at the ATM, pull out the money. I'm trying to pull out all the money and I'm noticing that like over $600 isn't there. I'm like, how's like, how's my check missing $600? The next day I went to the bank because I wanted to close up. I want to open my own bank account, all this stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, where's, because I, she had taken over access to the passwords, everything. All I had was just cards. She took all the paperwork. Wow. I didn't know what Shit. was going on with anything. Jesus. So the bank's like, well, she had Verizon, you know, the, the cell phone, you know, they they paid, they had an automatic draw on your account. I'm like, how does Verizon have a $600 phone bill? I figured it out because she was sitting on the beach while I'm making my freaking, my little trek around Aruba. She's calling somebody up in Canada. Oh, boy. oh, here we go. Yeah. Now I didn't know about this person in Canada Canuck until about for cock. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like know about this person. on a pile of shit. <laughs> I didn't oh, know shit. about the Canada person <laughs> for about a year and a half after. Wow. I didn't know, like, because it, like, she just cut it off. I didn't know, like, I didn't know, like, any of this. What was going on? I didn't know. So, it, three days later. I get a call from one of her friends when, you know, she used a rat line to try to, to get out of the country. You know, she'd stop with one friend and then move to the next friend. And the friend's like, well, do you want your dog back? I'm like, hell yeah. I want my dog back. Of course I want my dog back. Uh-huh. So I go, I meet up with this friend and I get my dog. I'm like, ah, what's why, why she, what's going on? Friend wouldn't tell me anything. All she would say is, well, she, She's leaving the country and she couldn't take the dog with her. I'm like, well, thank God. Is that dog? He, <laughs> he said she didn't have the rabies. He didn't get the rabies shot that year. And I guess she couldn't get through the border with him. All right. Because he didn't have the shot. Mm. Thank freaking God. Because that dog really mentally he saved my life. I mean, he's I gone gotcha. now, but I got gotcha. you. So for for about a week, I mean, I was just the lowest of the low of dive ever had to deal with and as the end of the month was coming up you know had come up now i start getting all these notices my house it's in foreclosure wow my taxes unpaid the the property taxes the power about to be turned off the water is about to be shut off Mm -hmm. i'm like holy fuck i didn't know any of this was going on yep she was because she was getting home before i was or she wasn't she was 
you know, off for the summer. And she was just grabbing all the mail. She was building up her nest of money. She was money. swirling the money yep. away, yeah. That's, swirling all the money away. That's exactly what happens. Uh, th- this is very common. And oh. I, I just, I couldn't believe she had run up the two cards. I, it took me about a year and a half to dig me out from this. I, I thankfully I got to keep the house because she walked away. She totally abandoned everything. Okay. So the divorce, I mean, she got it all on the front end, you know, uh-huh. I didn't have to pay her anything. Cause she, she essentially disappeared. Um, I tried tracking her down. She went to Canada somewhere. So you didn't have she, to pay her so any she, alimony or anything. Nothing. God I, damn. I all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, she got it on the front end. So, uh, in more yeah, ways she, than one. She, yeah. So she went into Canada. I lost her. She was, she's from Europe. Uh-huh. So she had a European passport and I suspect she probably went back to Europe somewhere. You haven't heard, I, you I, heard from her since? Nah. No, I not, haven't heard from her since that day that okay. she just said, this is the way it has to be. Well, hopefully she decided to spend a weekend in one of the no-go zones and, you know, got educated uh, about cultural diversity in the European Union. Uh, Maybe. I'm not, I'm not saying that that out. should happen. Did, did you get <laughs> stuck with like, uh, the debt for her school and all that? Or? Thankfully, I didn't. But I was getting notices for her from because she had run up. It was over a hundred thousand in, in oh, wow. student debt. Wow. She never yeah. paid that off. She no. So she, not only did she fuck me over, but she fucked over the government because it was you know government loan. Uh-huh. And uh, I you know I opened one of them, and I'm like, holy shit. And then the next one that came, I'm like, no longer at this address. <laughs> not my problem. Guns and Fuck off. Not my problem. But yeah, I mean, she she Shawshanked me. She did the Andy Dufresne. Ugh. Wow. And you and you don't know what happened to her. I don't know what happened to her. I know I figured out through a mutual friend that there was a dude involved. She uh-huh. found this dude. I don't know how she found him. If it was on the the first trip, or if it was somehow, you know, electronically through email or whatever. But, and how uh, long has it been? Uh, it was 2011. All right. So 10 years ago. Yep. Yeah. All right. Typically, uh, you could be, you expect a sling back between seven and 10 years. So if, what had happened by now? If there, well, if there's, oh, a, yeah. Yeah, if there's a major change in finances between you and her, or there's been, uh, Five to seven failed relationships after after she leaves. I mean, they usually, I mean, they usually look for a sling back. How uh, <laughs> how narcissistic would a person have to be though to to come back thinking that they would actually be welcome? They do it all the time after shit like. That. Well, they they don't actually show up thinking they're going to be able to just pick up where they left off. Some do, yeah. Most don't. Most of them will uh, contact you like in some innocuous, innocent way to see what your response will be. Or and prior to that, I've noticed one thing that they do is they try to, you know, reconnect with some of your old friends. Oh, hey, you came up as a suggested friend on my Facebook feed. How you doing? And then they start asking questions about yeah, you. Yeah. And then they they spiral in trying happy? to get to you. Is he yep. single? Yeah. So I, you know, you could probably expect that to happen sometime in the future. I don't know. She did me over so dirty that I would totally be like, get the fuck out of here where are you so i could send people to arrest you <laughs> yeah but uh gosh, I, I have not heard from her well, not I, even like what is he up to uh, hey i heard from her and she's wondering what's going on you know, i'm nothing. telling you man even the most vile women who pull this shit on the regular they will get it in their head that you will forgive them if they love bomb you enough that's right if it, oh it'll be just like it used to be. I'm so sorry. I I can't believe that I didn't appreciate what I had. When... Now, I, I I have a couple women that I, I dated back all the way back when I was in the army and I, my first time in. And every five to ten years, I'll hear uh, hear from these two women in some way, shape, or form. And then, like the last time it happened, I had to re- I had to actually res- you know remind this one particular woman, like hey. You fucked me over really hard. Yeah. Why are you t- Why are you contacting me? Because this is gonna work out. Yep. Yeah. yeah my ex horse chick started doing the whole uh, friend probing after about uh, the three or four year mark. Yep. 
after word got out that she was homeless and couch surfing and stuff like that. Yep. That's pretty much what happens. Uh, but if she's not an American citizen and she has a lot of student debt, she's probably not going to you – know, she's not an American citizen, is she? No. Yeah, and she's got student loans through this government, the United yeah. States? And that was the weird thing, too. She wouldn't – you know, we were married for almost – you know, we were married for nine years. She could have become a citizen, but she didn't want to. She didn't want to give up her Euro passport. Well, that's you know, chances are she's probably not coming back to the United States anytime soon. <laughs> exactly. They'll probably arrest her on site. Yep. Uh, well, I don't know if they arrest you for student loans, but they, uh, you know, if she could do this to you, she might have. Who knows? Maybe she's done some other nefarious shit and there's uh, law dogs uh, looking for her. Hmm. So this is pretty much what put you on the path of the red pill, huh? It, it was a start. It was a start. Big one. That was that was a pill about the size of a you know big old dill pickle. Uh, well, you can't swallow that pill. That one has to go up your ass. <laughs> that's called a suppository. No yeah, that's a suppository red pill. And most men who go through a divorce, that's how they get it. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, they don't try to swallow it after. <laughs> So how old would she be now? She would be, well, let's see, uh, 45, 44, 45. Wow. All right. Well, you want to read a few uh, Super Chats? And yeah, let's do a let's quick nail, sponsor break. Yeah. Let's nail some Super we'll, Chats. And then we'll talk about how you came to the red pill when we return here. Yeah. Uh, blood or water with a donation here. At least I wiped my own butt today. Unlike <laughs> some people with jokeable power, though not too fond of the chain hanging from it, still, I did it myself. <laughs> All right. Uh, Michael Simmons, merch idea, fat grenade plushie. Mm. I like it. And he's requesting double straw. Oh, oh bastard. Two for the price of one. Cockhole. I hit you in the face <laughs> with a big Black, you, wow, you really do have more in common with your ex-wife than you thought. Allegedly. Allegedly. Can I get me sued, bro? Yeah, I know. Stop it. It is what it is. I, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> Jeff on the bound. After bought from yesterday, or after thought from yesterday, do you remember how if you re-record over VHS, yeah, I'm old. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. You'll sometimes get the after image of what you recorded over. Maybe ghosts are a life recorded over. Could be. It's an interesting thought. That is interesting. Michael Simmons, my uncle told me about one of his friend's wives packed up the truck, the kids, and emptied the bank account before stopping <laughs> by his work with the papers. I've seen that before, too. That's how you get punched. Just well, saying. yeah, that's how fucking people get shot. Yes. And jumping over to MGTOW.TV, Coem Genus. Marriage is a huge investment. By the time you're married, you emotionally want to explain it away rather than destroy your life. Yeah, no one wants to believe that they invested 10 years in somebody who could do the kind of shit that, that they did Von Bomb's ex did to him. Yeah. Oh, well, that, I mean, there must be something here because I invested so much time and money. I mean, this is somebody you explicitly trust with your life. You're laying next to them every night. Yeah. Prone. I mean, they could stab you, you know, like, but you, you trust them. And sometimes and I did. people get stabbed. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Or they get boiling oil poured on their face. Yeah, they get the, the boiling oil wake up. <laughs> Senior airman Dick Fitzwell. Get married, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Well, they're all fucking morons. <laughs> <laughs> it's for your best, it's for your good, oh, it's for your it's, best interest, they said. It's for your said. own good, yeah. Yeah. I mean, married men live longer, right? Yeah. yeah allegedly. Yeah. Well, you know, hell, they keep uh, domestic animals get. They live longer than their wild version. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dull Wall with a twenty dollar donation. Thank you very much. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, please tell me you divorced this chick in absentia. Because if there's still a le legal documentation saying you're married to her, she can screw you all over again. Also, oh, no, it's we're good. I got the good. paperwork. Good. I'm not married to her anymore. Good. He says, also, get a and forensic I, accountant to go through everything. Uh, yeah, well, look, I I feel in a way I, I got a bit lucky because I was able to keep the house. Uh -huh. you know, I, I dug myself out of the, the hole. You know, I hate to, you know, kind of revert back to the uh, Germans on their work camps. But, you know, work sets you free. 
right? So, man, I just, after that all happened, I just dug right into work. And I'm like, I am not, this is not going to kill me. This is, I'm not giving up. Yeah. It's the best way to be, bro. It is. All right, we're going to take a quick sponsor break to have a shout out to Kevin's Concealment. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about how Billy Bomb Bomb came to the red pill. You ever get tired of women staring at that bulge in your pants? <laughs> you know what I mean. Come on, lady. My eyes are up here, right? Well, thanks to Kevin'sConcealment.com, there's the cure for that. And at the same time, you get to exercise your Second Amendment rights at work and <laughs> not get fired. You take your bulge, put it in the holster, and <laughs> voila! You guys thought I was talking about something else. That's a homo suspicion point. Space Ghost is on. Go to kevinsconcealment.com and check out if they have a holster for your sidearm. Use the discount code POP, P-O-P-P, -P, links in the description. The Meat Gazer box caught you looking. All right, so Mr. Von Baum. Von Baum! Yes, sir. So you got waylaid. You divorced her in absentia, so basically it was uncontested. Yep. You didn't have to pay her any alimony. Didn't have. Did you get stuck with any of her debt? Any of that shit? Well, you know, she moved uh, stuff into my name with like the credit card, so I got stuck with that, and I had to end up paying that off. I mean, she killed my credit for a couple years because uh -huh. of all these things that were were going unpaid that I didn't know about. Again, I, you know, I know I was stupid. I I trusted this person. And uh, okay. it fucked me over, but I'm never going to be in that situation again. Hey, you know what? I, I was when I did my final walk of shame down the driveway of my marital home after I cleaned out the garage where all my shit had been thrown. I literally said, "I'm never doing this again." Please. Fuck this. <clears throat> yeah. So, how did you uh, come to the red pill after all the, so, the divorce <laughs> and all the debt and everything like that? So in a way, if you could look at, you know, the sunnier part of life, the way she did it so hard and so cold and, and horribly, it, it ignited this fire in me. And I'm like, fuck this woman. You're not going to like, it just, I, about a week, I got, I got over it in about a week. It wasn't like, oh, I wish she'd come back. Where is she calling, blowing up her phone? I, after about. 20 calls of trying to get reach her. I, fuck her. Fuck this woman. How dare she? I'll show her. And then I started going crazy with dating. <laughs> also, was, you went nuts. You went nuts on the pussy. <laughs> I went nuts, man. Okay. I got for like three years after that. I was just off the rails. And after so, a while, you were free range like, fornicating. I was like, what the F is wrong with me? I mean, it was, I was starting to turn things into like games. Like I'd be like, oh, today, you know, this week, I think I'll uh, go after a blonde this week. You know, maybe I'll check out what uh, Puerto Rican girls like. <laughs> this week, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what this flavor from this part of the world is like. You know, all all right. these kind of things. And, and then th this is the sick part. And I don't know if it's just me that did this or does it or you know, I stopped. I had to stop because I, I started making a list. I put their name and I'd start ranking them. I guess this is like my engineering math mind, you know, I'm like, uh -huh. okay. And there was three criteria. B, how was the blowjob? How was the sex? <laughs> and how was the looks and personality? Okay. Three columns ranked one to 10. And then, you know, the average of three, I got the average of the three, <laughs> I had a list of these women. I was like, I, and one day I just, I looked at this and I'm like, this is, this is sick, man. This is like, this is other level. Like, this is like an addiction. Well, I know I wasn't like crazy addicted. Like there's guys who are sex addicts who were just, they don't give a crap who they sleep like rigs or whatnot. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, I would have standards that I would go after, but. Uh, yeah. So 
and but then I ran into a stalker, mm. and she was a freaky freak. And this was and, what your alcoholics referred to as a moment of clarity. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We went on a date. She had her boobs all out. I'm like, oh my god. And we went Eating back to my house that night uh -huh. and plowing her, and she, and she was, you know, the whole. Oh, daddy, daddy. Oh, oh daddy. Oh. Red flag. I'm like, Red so, flag. Yeah, I'm so like, what you're saying. Uh, it's, it's like, ah, uh, it's a little weird. So right? what you're saying, she was doing cheetah flips on your penis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. And yeah. then, you know, I she wanted me to blow on the on her chest. Mm -hmm. What? So I blew on the chest. Oh, I was and, actually uh, picturing the raspberry. Like, <laughs> you motorboat and uh, set up a bitch. Blew on, <laughs> blew on her chest. And then she, like, starts, like, like, like taking it and putting it in her mouth i'm like oh okay well <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> enjoy is, that uh -huh. behavior is well rehearsed i'm just saying yeah, yeah so, that's the like, first oh, time that ooh. happened okay just say no that. no she had practice yeah and then the, after the third the, the third date she got really drunk she drank like a bottle and half of wine mm. she got all sloppy and i love you and all this i'm like eh. I'm like, you need to go home. She's like, but I've been drinking. You know, I say, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, call a cab. You're out of here. And, um, yeah, <laughs> leave. And that was it. I, I stopped talking to her. And then like a week later, she calls me up. She's like, I think I'm pregnant. I'm oh, like, God. Wait, wait, what? That would be quite a trick. <laughs> was, yeah, because we never, I, I didn't, I'm like, that's impossible. I didn't blow inside. Like, there's no way you're pregnant. She's like, well, it could happen. It could I'm happen. like, no, no, it can't happen. This isn't happening. You need to leave me alone. We're done with this. She's got like a turkey baster under the mattress. And when you went into the bathroom <sighs> to clean up, she grabbed it, siphoned it all up. And like, ah, ah. <laughs> God, that's it's so horrible to think about. But women actually do that. Well, wasn't there recently like a hotel maid? Who got knocked up by stealing a millionaire's condom in the trash at a hotel, impregnated herself, oh. and successfully got child support? I don't wow. I'm not familiar with that. Wow! I mean, that's next level sperm jacking, right? Yes, there. it is. That is crazy. And that maid had was a uh, you know, she, she really gambled on that mm -hmm. one. It was playing Russian roulette with somebody else's swimmers. So, so continue on, man. Yeah. So, so then she like showed up at my work she started like calling family members through i had facebook i got rid of facebook because that's just an evil app <laughs> she like hooked up through my facebook and started like contacting my family members wow. and friends and i'm like i call her up i'm like you need to stop this i am going to get a restraining order on you because you are bat fucking shit crazy and she just I, but i love you i love you and i'm like no you don't love me i don't love you you're not pregnant you need to go away. And it got to the point where I actually did have to go to the police station and file a restraining order. Wow. And I said, yeah. And I said, I, I can't, like, I'm done with this. I can't do this kind of lifestyle anymore because this is just, this is insane. I, yeah. can't, I can't get involved with people like this. I've been there myself. And there's, there's people in the chat who are like, this sounds stupid. I was like, dude, if you haven't been there. Uh-huh. It, you will actually kind of mentally wake up in the middle of a moment. You're like, what am I doing? And then you feel like it's already too late because you've already started. Yeah. Uh, just so everybody knows, yeah, the, the story that I just recalled off the top of my head is a real thing. I wanted to throw it up on the screen for you because... What year did this happen? In? Last year. This oh, sh shit. This should not exist. Wow. Holy shit. $3 million child support lawsuit. Ow. Boom. That's why we say use a condom and take it with you. Yeah, and judges need to like. If I was the judge, I'd probably be like, "Oh, okay, you're suing for child support. I give the custody to that guy." Yeah. Oh, well, because clearly he can afford it. Yeah. Good luck with that. But we all know it's not about the best interest of the child. Well, uh, so what you're telling me, Von Baum, is you hooked up with a woman for Europe and married her. I have a couple. I have a friend of mine, close personal friend. Who married a chick that was from Russia? Her father was a retired general, Ooh. and he was married to her for ten years. And right around year eight, it started falling apart, and she started doing all kinds of crazy shit. And then she 
went, she just disappeared and virtually the same thing you, you said happened to you happened to him, except he was a little more careful with his finances and he didn't get, uh, get hoodwinked as bad. Ugh. And, I mean, you're actually lucky that she was so selfish there were no children involved. Yes. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not only would she have cleaned you out, she could continue to clean you out. Well, my mm-hmm. buddy divorced her and then eventually got remarried and has two kids now. And every now and again, she calls him for trying to get a sling back again because, you know, she's not married. She's not really working. An ass load of debt. So... It does happen, man. That's actually one of the reasons they tend to sling back is because. Yeah. And look, you gentlemen out there need to know this. This is part of woman, a woman's nature. They will sling you back. Yep. If you're good to them, treat them nice. And, you know, you paid the bills and you're a responsible person. Yep. They will, they'll rip your heart out through your asshole. Yep. Go out in the real world. And then reality will have at them and they will try to sling you back. Yep. What happens is their friends, who are either unhappy or divorced, what have you, misery loves company. Mm -hmm. So they try to get them keen on the idea of re-experiencing their 20s and their 30s or 40s. Like, oh, this is so much more interesting. The guy who takes care of them pays the bills, you know, comes home, wants to, you know, sit down and watch some Netflix at night. That's not interesting yeah, he's mr boring yeah now. when they're that age they're not as yeah. interested in safety and security and personality as they are in drama and excitement all of a sudden when you know the doors start to close to all those various opportunities that used to fly at them hand over balled up sticky fist if you know what i mean yep, yep. all of a sudden that safety and security and stability starts to look pretty damn good and that's when they come out of the woodwork looking for you mm-hmm. it's sad and it's pathetic especially if they hurt you Yes. Yeah. And, you know, a lot, I mean, a lot of guys I know have committed suicide over shit like this. Yep. Yeah. And we have saved 402 of them from that. 402. Place. We're at 402 now. We need to have our pizza party next yep, week. Yep, we do. Just in time for Christmas. And, and that's why, I, you know, I'm telling the story, you know. You can, like, you can survive this kind of stuff. You just got to yeah, and gotta another- know that there is... There is life after such tragedy. Yeah. Yep. And you're lucky you didn't have any kids. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that would have been way worse. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, how's the chat? Are they, I don't know, are they liking this stuff? Uh, that's why I'm uh, not reading the chat. Seem to be having some fun. So yeah, we, right, we got Riggs Jr. in the chat. So at least there's a little bit of chlamydia <laughs> for everybody. That's well, the, the thing is, is like we do red pill MGTOW stuff, and this is very important for people to, especially the younger guys out there that don't really know how the world works, or you're living in some kind of romantic notion of what you want to do with your future in regards to, you know, female relations. Yeah. You're going to get fucked over. And if, you, if, you're, if you're going to play around with this, you need to know what the obstacles are, the traps are, and uh, how to you know give you the the wisdom to be able to navigate that for yourself. Because I do not want to see you know suck start a shotgun. No, I don't mm-hmm. see anybody do that. But this is very common. All too common. Yeah, and yeah. now uh, you fully recovered and you're doing you're doing good. Yes, both make- financially fully recovered. Um, All right, I, but I will never trust a woman to that degree ever again. No, no um, man should. No, no. And uh, so a- after the stalker, mm-hmm. I said, "Okay, let me let me try like getting with some little more uh, uh, serious relationship, but not serious, serious. Not where they're moving in or uh-huh. talking about marriage or anything." So I got involved with a woman and uh you know she did the whole after a while she'd be like well you know we should have a bank account together we should get married don't you and and she knew right from the bat that i told her right off the bat i'm like we're not getting married we're not sharing a bank account like i am not going down that road ever again and she was oh okay okay and then it started getting to the point well i'm not like you know why are you letting her 
you know, dictate how I am. I'm not her. I'm different. I'm different. I love you. It's not fair. She fucked you over. It's not fair to me. So what? Life isn't fucking fair. Yeah. Get over it. You don't like it? Leave. I'll I'll just take the the number and I'll leave it at the meat counter and then my turn is over and the next person can take over where I left off. Well, this entitlement is bred by innate value. Because yeah. when you're born with your value versus having to gain it through hard work, when everybody throws shit at you just for existing in your formative years, you're going to carry that with you to the fucking grave if you're not adult enough to actually think your way around it. Correct. And that's the problem with most Western women, is that they've, they've been showered with everything and been told they're oppressed at the same time. They can't rectify those two things in their head, and that's why the vast majority of women under the age of 30 who vote Democrat are crazy. Yep, and one in, one in four of them are taking head meds, and that stat's like 13 years old now. It's got to be one in three now. Uh, yeah, and it's got to be. It's got to be one in three. Just the, think about it. Head meds are more common than herpes, allegedly. Allegedly, of course. Yeah. Although if they keep doing what they're doing, it's they're going to be, be neck and neck. Neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. No, no, no. But you're doing okay. You make good money now. You fully recovered. Make good money. I've been with the company I've been with for almost 17 years now. Very good. Nice. I'm doing good. So how did um, you get into making content? Yeah. So, well, so how I found YouTube and all that stuff. So I, I kicked that woman to the curb who wanted to, you know, take things more to a higher level and all that stuff. But she had me thinking there's something wrong with me, right? So... YouTube to me at the time, this was like 2018, was a place you go for like instructional videos, you know, uh -huh, not yeah, so yeah. much like entertainment. At least that's the way in my mind how I thought about it. So I'm like, I started looking up stuff like, what's wrong with me? You know, why don't I want to get married? And the first guy who came out, because I'm into cars and whatnot, was uh, Richard Cooper uh -huh. from uh, Entrepreneurs in Cars. He's and I'm good like, dude. Oh, okay, He's let me listen dude. to this guy. And, uh, and then I, I found this stumbled into sandman and then turd fling and monkey was in there at the time uh aaron clary and yeah, then i yeah. found you um and i'm like now i was listening to these other guys and everything's so serious and the everything's like doom and gloom and whatnot and your guys you guys were had this humor element and i'm like it doesn't always need to be all this doom and gloom and horrible like uh the yep. world is ending and <laughs> you know, these women are, you know, you're never going to get anywhere and all this shit. Uh, yeah. and I also like the way you got, you do the, um, when you do the lists on the back, on the, on the blackboard, <laughs> those lists together. love those. Yeah. We got a, got a few more lists coming up. Yep. Yeah. We're working on uh, the list of things that will piss, the things you say that piss off women. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Could be funny. That's a long list. <laughs> well, right now it's about twenty-one long. Uh, spoiler alert: number one on the list, no. That's right, no. <laughs> doesn't take much. No, nope. no, it does not. Just like it doesn't take a lot of imagination to piss off a feminist. I just can't believe you haven't heard from her again. Yeah, no, gone. It's been ten years, huh? All right, good. Ten years. Well, some might. She could be dead. Enough. Could she be. could be. <laughs> Maybe somebody else, you know. Considering she tried the, uh, doing it to somebody else and they put a, you know. She got disappeared. Her. Well, considering the Maybe. study of brave cultural state in Europe, anything is possible right now. Yeah. That's right. Fuck him. Fuck him. Space Let's ghost is on. Just looking here. But we do have some content of Billy Von Bombs that I wanted ah. to throw up here. No, okay. No, no pun intended. Just to see Pop's reaction to it. This oh, is a video okay. that Billy put Nightmare together fuel. called Nightmare Fuel. Let's see if anybody can actually get through this. And I know that the chat is going to blow up with vomit emojis. And they're going to wonder <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me for even agreeing to do this. But you know what? That's I didn't put you up to this. No, no, no. This is my idea. All right. Because I'm an a-hole. Throw it on there. But I don't care. Let's see this shit. Biddy von. Biddy von. Biddy von. Bon, 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 bon. Yeah, that's it's a Friday night challenge. How long can you watch the video for? Oh my. And put your time in the bottom. You have five minutes. Go. Ah. I'll play. Oh no! Okay. 
Oh, God. Oh, that's a gunt. Yeah, that is a gunt. That's a gut upper nuptial taint. It is. That's exactly what that is. What the mother? You, you would expect to see her on one of those little belt thing machines. It looks like an insect <gasps> mating dance. <gasps> oh, All no. Right. All right. So what we got here is we got a 20-year-old girl with 50-year-old tits. It looks like somebody removed the bones from Snoopy's face and then tied them to that chick's chest. Here we go. Eh, I've seen worse on yeah, that yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, that's... Oh! Oh! oh, oh. See, this is, how ah. they, this is how they get you on dating sites. Oh, my God. They start out with that picture. Yep. Where you just see, like, the, the cleavage in the face, which yeah. looked okay. Yeah, and then they pull out, which is what you should be doing. Oh, my God. Push away from the table. Oh! 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 oh. If she was wearing red, she'd look like the Kool-Aid man. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the crazy thing about this stuff is this is so this is all from TikTok. And you will have guys in oh there my like, God, oh, this... baby, you're so beautiful. And oh. all this stuff. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, Sims, man. Sims. That's Tyrannosaurus Rexitis right there. Looks like my high school biology teacher. And she waddled away, waddle, waddle. Oh my, well, there you go. You're doing what you do best. Wait, what? She's, where's your tit fat? Yeah, says, oh my God! It's a midget! It's a fat midget. Oh, I'm sorry, little people, little people, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we got people in the chat saying, I think I like men now. You can't look away. <laughs> you can't look away. It's a train wreck. Another midget. Is that a midget? They're short and midget. She looks like a midget. I don't know if she's a midget. She might just be short. Yeah, it's a, or just oh, here we go. Loose some weight. Yep. How about you learn how to spell? Well, she's at least she's got her weight top heavy. Oh, there you go. That makes you even more attractive. Yeah, but where's the? I'm wondering where the course. Oh, is. we got a ginger here. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. Banana pudding. Banana pudding in the house. Oh my. Yeah, that's. Do you ever this girl makes a lot of videos. Yeah. She is all over TikTok. I, I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Do you ever wonder where these body types come from in nature? Well, they, I know I do. They get comfortable and they eat too much. Or perhaps the answer is the background of the video. All the pizza and onion rings and fried foods. And chicken. I think that's a bratwurst there at the bottom, right? Yep. Okay. And, and, and they had to cut the video because they didn't want to see that she's got three people there to help her up. Jinkies. Wow. I've seen worse. Oh, oh, oh. She's, what, 25? Is she in a child seat? I don't know. I, I think her eyes were going in different directions. Yeah, this looked like a lot of the women that were at the Guns N' Roses concert and in the back room doing sweaty, nasty things with people. Yeah. You know, you're just not remembering them from your Hog Slayer days? Well, you know, <laughs> back in my days, some of these women would be on the menu. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Oh, not that one. Not that one. No. No, that's not. No, not that one either. Yeah, she'd have to lift that up for you to go south. Definitely eight mile. not that one. You wind up with a concussion. That's a brimolo right there, <laughs> or a wamolo. <laughs> ah, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you're supposed to save the best for last, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna look away. <laughs> Look at those yankles and shankles in her arms. I don't think I... Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man, her oh, see, see, this is what happens, though, when single mothers raise boys to simp for women like this. Yes. They wind up with egos that could reinflate the freaking Hindenburg. Correct. And then dudes wonder why... There's like a, a growing community of people who never get laid. It's because you take women like this and inflate their egos, hoping you can break off a piece, and then they all think they can get the type tier men. They go to eight to ten. They're looking for eight to tens. Yeah. Now I'm not saying that it's our that it's all dudes' fault, but they are part of the problem. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, this this stuff is. If you're watching this right now, you, me, besties. Uh, th th I'm, I'm going to have to say no. No. <laughs>
Where the fuck did you find all that shit, bro? That's fucking. It's, that's like TikTok in a nutshell. Wow. You just troll TikTok and find these things, or, or are they it's, just that easy to find? It's that easy to find. Oh TikTok is AIDS. Let me tell you. Visual Video AIDS. AIDS. Visual uh, I like it. AIDS. Subscribe to Billy I mean, Vaughn. He has, uh, here's his YouTube channel right here, Billy Vaughn. It's not, Billy. Apparently, when you had bomb in the screen name, no one could search for you. Yeah, which I wish totally. I would have known before I titled this stream. And I'm getting a bunch of stuff in well, the chat could, <laughs> saying that they didn't could, get notifications. Yeah, you could um, you could search Billy Vaughn bomb. It comes up now. Yeah, but, but it still when, goes to Billy Vaughn. In fact, yeah. it went it went to your channel faster typing in Billy Vaughn Bomb than it did just Billy Vaughn. All right, so uh, Pop has to go take a piss, and that means that it's yeah. time for the Twilight Zone. Submitted for your approval, Terence Pop, a sane man in a world gone mad. And in that world, at any given time, you have a 99.97% chance of not shitting your pants. A tyrannical government, hell-bent on providing subsidized kickbacks to fascistic heads of corporate industry, has the gullible populace convinced of one thing. You must at all times wear a diaper, because if you don't, your neighbor might shit his pants. It's all your fault. Get the fuck out of here, you smelly bastard. Let this be a lesson. Never give up your rights to the state in exchange for safety and security. Because those that do deserve neither. It's the first step toward that cliff known as annihilation. And the next step might just land you in the Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah! This is going to be posted by itself, so you guys can share this out and offend all of the Fauchists this Friday. The Fauchists. <laughs> I like it. Or should I change it to the Twatlight Zone? That was a suggestion Ooh. last night. Oh, the Twat. What do you guys think? Twilight Zone or Twatlight Zone? Well, Twatlight Zone, you're definitely not going to get a strike. Uh, or, well, we're not going to, well, we might get a strike for age restriction because it's Twatlight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. But you can't get a strike for for parody. Okay. So, I don't know, man. Although, I don't know. Like, uh, it seems to me that men are starting to wake up now, especially now that they have their own community, the, the manosphere or, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And uh, absolutely. But you know, there's there's this whole growing uh, thing within the manosphere. I've noticed where. You know, there's a lot of guys who are trying to take advantage of the Manosphere, it seems. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they're turning their channels into, or, you know, maybe I'm just noticing more. It's, you know, it's uh, how to how to get women, you know, like a pickup uh, artist. A Pua? Thing. Yeah, it's kind of like... Uh, well, first know, of all, well, first of all, all right. I myself am not a pickup artist. Never have been, don't want to be. All right. But there's a lot of men out there who were raised by women, have been around women for basically their whole life, who don't know how to interact and pick up women. And that's where I think the PUA artists are necessary. PUA artists? The pickup artists. This is the pickup artist artists. Yeah, well, the thing is, it's like back <laughs> in the day when, when there was a father in the home, you got to see how your father interacted with your, your mother and then other women. And a lot of times, like, the father would sit down and go, hey, all right, yeah, we can run down that hill and fuck one, one, one cow, or we can walk down there and fuck them all. 
<laughs> and men are not are not getting those kind of briefings from their fathers, and it's crippling them, you know, as they move forward in life. You know, I mean, hey, listen, when you're a young man, that you have those urges, and that's Mother Nature calling. That's just the way it is. You know, I was a free range fornicator. You were obviously a free range fornicator. We got fooled by the yeah, Blake, free range fornicator. It happens. All been there. But there's a lot of guys out there that just don't know how to do that, and that's where I can see the pickup artists, you know, helping them out. I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I have a problem when they start uh, telling these guys, to, you know, to like be you know abusive and and you know do things that are uh, blatantly hurtful to these women. Yeah, I I am I, I don't want to like blatantly mm -hmm. hurt anybody. Yeah, it's 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 unavoidable that every community is going to have some people attracted to it who are yeah. not going to be the most desirable, mm -hmm. and they're gonna. And they might not even have the best interest of the people in the community at heart. Yeah. Because if you just look at the dictionary definition of feminism, everybody can basically agree, yeah, whatever, you know, like we're separate but equal, I guess we could say. We bring different things to the table. That's totally true. But then you've got people who cling to the ideology of what that is as a way of absolving themselves of all responsibility for their actions and then weaponizing it against what they feel is, you know, like a perceived or even if it's completely imaginary slight. Yes. And then they justify vitriol and violence. And if they can't do actual violence, they call words violence. Well, I know they've, they've called the MGTOW red, kill, red pill community you know, we're ultra violent. And yeah. all we really do is tell men, fuck it, pull back from the system. Take care of yourself. Do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah, but MGTOW's the Taliban of the manosphere. Get Wham. the fuck out of here. Uh, uh, only because we're nuking your, you know, the finances and the resources that these women enjoyed for forever. I well, mean, the marriage rate's down to 6.5 yeah. per thousand people. Yeah. Well, well, why do you think they decided to include uh, financial abuse on the wheel of power and control? Oh, yeah. So they could call MGTOW essentially abusers. Any, well, the thing is, is with that wheel of control, you can call anybody of an abuser for anything. Yeah. Anything. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's quite disgusting. Yeah, fuck this shit, I'm out. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Now, I got to ask, Billy. I I'm yeah. on your channel here. The turd cutter twerk off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing my balls off here. The one minute 304 turd cutter twerk off. <laughs> I need to start uh, coming you know, to you for for uh, <laughs> title ideas. <laughs> That's genius. Yep. <laughs> Believe it or not, that got age restricted because it's all butts. Oh, shocker! Yeah, YouTube they... seems to have a problem with butts. Oh, uh, they've they've been fucking with us forever for the stuff oh, we yeah. do. The pop culture video that Hammerhand hosted. Not a single object, like uh, objectively objectable thing in it. Everybody's fully clothed. We don't really dive into any, you know, descriptive sexual talk, age restricted. Yep. Because totally. it was blowing up too fast. He's that, a good guy. I, yeah, he is. I, I like Hammerhead. Hammerhead. He's, he's a good guy. I, he's, he does it for, you know, the right reasons. He's not out, and like myself, I'm not out here so, trying to sell you something. If you know, if you want to make a buck or whatever, to buy a beer, that's great. And there's other guys in this thing who are just, all they want to do is push their books, their programs all this crap and well i mean look this isn't this stuff isn't free no okay right. and uh if they want to you know put together some products and sell them I, i'm all for it because we're well i mean we're, we're probably gonna do the same thing yep uh, administrative, administrative violence, violence. In, in full swing production uh there has actually been a request for consults with you one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. uh, we're putting together some some pricings for that because we're we're really busy dudes so. yeah yeah the only thing i i have about the consults is i am not a therapist no i'm not here to give you uh to treat you in any way i just give you advice you follow it or not yeah that's it yeah, and it's not going to be insanely expensive or anything. No, I'm, I mean, I'm not here to fucking. Fuck. I, I couldn't believe it when I found out how expensive some of these guys were. Yes, like like six hundred bucks for an hour. Yeah, time. that's that's insane. I don't Do make that much? much actually working. Yeah. Do you know how much Richard Cooper charges? I have no idea. Three thousand dollars an hour. What? 
<laughs> swear to God, I, I heard him on Aaron Richard. Clary was having something and he was saying that's how much they charge. That, Richard uh, Cooper should be named Dick Pooper because that's well, exactly where it's going. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to listen. I'm not here to disparage anyone. I just think that's a little outrageous. That, but That's his business. Hey, if people want to pay him for it. Yeah. You know? And another thing that really annoys me is we have all of this fucking in the manosphere's everyone's like having beef with each other it, it's and it's yeah. counterproductive and, and this new thing with fresh and fit has really kind of reinvigorated that yes I, i'm just this is why we don't talk about beef yeah I, I because don't. it we have a hard enough time with the system as it exists uh -huh. let alone turning on each other when we're supposed to be and remember that over here remember together. way back in the day that one guy was fucking getting stupid with me and i literally pulled the license plate off his car on his Facebook Oh, yeah, page. and then he tried to say, that's not me. And then I, I ran his <laughs> criminal record. I, I literally fucking I climbed up this guy's ass with a microscope. Yeah, but we kept it all in-house. And I, then I, at the end, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? This is such a waste of time. All you did, I mean, we kept it all in-house, and all you did was just send it to him to let him know, I got your number if I, if I feel like getting stupid. Yeah. And he still, eventually, he just kind of... He know, disappeared. At first, it was, I'll kick your ass. Yeah, sure. And then eventually, after you brought receipts, he kind of faded off. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not doing that again. Yeah. I, I, you know, I get... I think maybe in the 10 years I've been doing this, I have banned maybe 250 people. Out of hundreds of thousands. Yes. That's, that's and like, bad. you really, you really got to try hard. Uh, talk about your you. kids. Yeah, that'll talking do it. Talking about your kids, talking about your family in any way. No, no. Or uh, people glorifying suicide. I, I will oh, not yeah. tolerate that either. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten comments on the Purple Hearts Final Beat video saying that if you serve this country you in the military, it. you deserve it. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Banned. Banned. Exactly. Yeah. Not dealing with that. It's quite, uh, quite ridiculous, which is why we talk about it. Yep. It sure is. Now... Okay, so what are your future plans? What I mean, what do you uh, what would you like to do moving forward? Well, you know, I've been trying to build up the channel. You know, and I started the channel just for just to have fun. Like I said uh, earlier, you know, a lot of the manosphere, the red pill, MGTOW, it's just doom and gloom, and it's just that's what attracted me to you guys is because you keep it upbeat, keep it fun. It's like hanging out with friends and talking and whatnot. Well, the thing just, is, uh, we want to be like the uh, the funny bartenders. <laughs> well, like one of the main things I do is I'm trying to, like, like, there's a lot of veterans out there who served time in the military. Some of them extended periods of time. You cannot be in the military, and it doesn't matter what branch you're in, unless you're able to develop a sense of humor to defend yourself from the absolute fucking insanity that takes place. All right, and then they get out of the military and they forget about the sense of humor, and then they get crushed, and they kill themselves or they drink themselves to death. Yep. I am just trying to keep that sense of humor that they developed alive, so they can keep that you know mental defense against the universe. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. You so, want them to have the kind of mental defense you don't have against images in your head. Yes. Yes. Like that uh, video about the surgery. I mean, I <laughs> can throw that you, out no, for you no, if you want to refresh no, your memory. Are no. you sure? No, I'm good. Thank I you. mean, it wasn't that bad. Was, no. Okay. Just make sure. I can't do it. Don't it it wouldn't be a stream if I didn't fuck with you a little bit. I could not willingly. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine how people will get on an operating table and are totally cool with that. Cut my yeah. penis off. It's like the reverse of watching sausage being made. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, at, at what, what, I mean, just think about how effed up you are in your thinking meat. To get on that operating table, look at the surgeon, go, oh, it's okay if you cut my penis off. What the fuck is that about? And turn it inside out and then necessitate that I have to use a banana or other equivalent for the rest of my life because it's keep it from healing basically up. an infection. Like, and it's not, it's not dehumanizing, to point this out, to say that people might need treatment instead of uh, enabling. Yep. It's, in fact, I would say that we're being a little more understanding than most would be <laughs> especially if they were in a crying game situation yes well my thing is this is i resent the fact that they are trying to get me 
to pretend in someone else's delusion. No. I just am not programmed that way. No. I, I mean, what mental hospital treats the schizophrenic by, you know, inviting the family in and saying, now, when they say that they see something, or there's, you know, that there's aliens in the microwave, or they have alien blood flowing through their veins. It's important that you agree with them. It's, it, you know, we're not going to be able to bring this person back to reality unless we agree with their delusions. Yes. I just. I can't do it, man. Yeah, can't. I can't do it. It's not my style. It's not no, my style. That, that's not, uh, that's so we not got, compassion. Do we got any more super chats or anything? We do have some super chats. Let's hammer some of those. All right. Alternative, alternative lifestyles for men. I've been through something similar. Didn't see it coming. One day she just left after three years. Three months later, she's married to some guy. Oh, you were probably one of two the entire time. Possibly more. God damn, that's just terrible. Ugh. It's horrendous. Yeah, but yeah, we've all been there. Yep. Uh, Jeff Schroeder, did someone say Kool-Aid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. T. Greeny won. So is the F at M. Idget riding your junk where the term fidget spinner came from? <laughs> well, not those particular midgets. I no, should say that. No. no. Those aren't spinners. Those are flappers. Yes. Yeah. If you try to turn a flapper into a spinner, that's how you wind up with a chiropractor bill. Yeah. My, I had a former commander. I had to give him that briefing. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's how you slip a disc in your back. The wall. Dr. Edward Dutton refers to these as spiteful mutants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Ah, nah, I mean, what are you going to do, man? Yeah, it's okay. Fortunately for us, women like that are in short supply. <laughs> Engineering. If this video had a scratch and sniff, I would smell baby powder and cottage cheese. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Or, or ricotta. Ricotta. Ricotta cheese. Left out in the sun. Yes. Jeff Schroeder, those are the women in Toledo, Ohio. Ha ha. <laughs> Actually, those are the women all over the country because American women are fat. Rimelos. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, two-thirds of American women now are overweight. Probably. Yeah, I, I cannot. Certain demographics, it's 80%. Yeah, I just, it just doesn't do anything for me anymore. I just, I'm done. I mean, you know that you've made it as a country and that you don't have any real problems. Well, at least not the ones you complain about when the poor kids are fat. Yep. The poor kids have an Xbox, yeah. cell phone, and they're all fat. True Blue, the cat with a $20 super chat. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where's the bit? Oh, God! Why didn't anybody tell me? <laughs> Brimelows. Uh, over on Streamlabs, Tracy Wilborn. Blake, you bastard! I was trying to eat my lunch. You've ruined my lunch time. Sorry. Hey, it was my idea, but it was Billy's video. And I feel sorry for you. The fa I mean, we just had to watch it. You had to take the time to curate all those clips... Yeah. And, and arrange them in an order and then watch it over and over again to make sure that it was timed how you wanted it. Yeah. You I'm sorry, brother. Yeah. About three times. From the bottom <laughs> it was of my torture. heart. I, I'm, I'm sorry you had to do that, but it is funny. It is funny. And, you know, it kind of wakes you up to, you know, some of the stuff that's going on out there. Like, what the hell is happening in this world? Yeah. Uh, we just got a, a great request, actually. Yeah. For a super chat. Fubar says, make the hog slayer call a ringtone, please, sir. Sue Sue No, no, no. I, I did I did a pig roast for uh Thanksgiving. <laughs> but when I when I was in the army, right, the CQ would call me to the phone by doing the hog call. Yep. Oh, I'd literally he'd be like feeling. he'd be like Sue Sue <laughs> And everybody just went deaf. Yeah, and I would literally run down the stairs, grab the phone, and be like, hey, stop, you're going to hurt her feelings, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of ringtones, though, gentlemen, uh, for those of you who haven't you know, signed up for a free Wix membership for Redonculus.com, downloadables right here at the top. You get your gonorrhea ringtone and the Pringle Smells ringtone. That music video is going to be posted next week, just in time for the holidays. Sweet nectar. So you can send it out to all of your relatives, and then they can wonder what exactly is wrong with it. Like, what the fuck's wrong with that guy? <laughs> uh, you know, 
Nothing that a you know, good dose of fibrocell wouldn't cure, <laughs> <laughs> or, or or make ten times worse. Yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> Forever Sci-Fi says, "I'm glad I took the headphones off before that." Amen. All right, jumping over to MGTOW.TV. Got a couple more here from Coem Genus. All the channels run by women telling men how to pick up women are the real scam. Yes, they are. Never go to women for dating advice. No. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. They will lie to you 10 times out of 10. They don't actually want you to ever be happy subconsciously, so they'll always sabotage you. Well, it's the same thing with these, you know, women's you know, friends who come back in their life. Yeah. And then, you know, six months later, you wind up divorced. Yep. And it's why feminist pushes agendas that make women less desirable to men overall is because they want to thin the herd by not thinning the herd, if you know what I mean. Just take them out of the running. Yep. J.S. Stillman, number 371 here. After my mother died, my ex burned through about half of the 125K. Oof. I was left and about two weeks later announced she wanted to divorce. I took what I had left and bought a tiny house, so I avoided the whole homeless thing. Uh -huh. You guys were able to save me, but it was too late for my brother. Oh, I'm sorry, his, his divorce killed him, drank himself to death, probably 85% suicide. Yep, that happens all the time. Godspeed to your brother, man. That is rough. I'm sorry, man. Ugh. Uh, jumping over to Odyssey, we got a couple of library coin donations from Dale David, finally able to catch a live show this week. Well, we're glad to have you. Michael Wolf, 1972, first time commenting, and I don't know what the diamonds work out to, but use it for more imbibing fluid. After hearing this story, his ex makes mine look like a fucking saint. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Every, you know, listen, she when, I was in, evil. when I was on active duty, every time I went to the field, we'd come back, there'd be one to three people who returned to an absolute empty house, missing children, bank account cleaned out, it happened all the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys are in the service and you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look up one of my past videos called Deploy Ahoy. And that's basically an NCO briefing yep. to the lower enlisted on how to not get fucked when you're on deployment. Yes. <laughs> I believe that episode is currently on the in the archive channel, but I am slowly starting to bring back some of those older episodes. If you guys have not subscribed yet, uh, you haven't been paying attention to the community chat, youtube.com slash Terrence Pop Culture. It's where you find all of these streams after they have been aired live because YouTube loves to give us strikes. Yep. And youtube.com slash Grunt Speak is where you get your short bits. And today's is about uh, uh, Lana. You know, the one who enjoys Alana spelled backwards ah. and how she wants to have all of her content deleted from the internet because it's important for my mental health, we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you not You should have thought happen. about that before you drank that bowl of puke. Or you, you, you sign the contract. <laughs> you sign the contract to drink the shit and the piss and the puke and now it's on the internet. You I fuck. didn't know how to say no. Oh, that's funny because you just did. Listen, um, I know I know hundreds of men. Hundreds who will not mess on a permanent basis with a woman with a questionable sexual past. Oof. Like you, you have, if you worked in the sex industry in any way, shape or form done. A hey, past behavior is a pretty good predictor Absolutely of future correct. behavior. That's why they try to convince you that their past doesn't matter, but we all know the deal. Or should I say, but we all know the deal. That's a good one. Like I said, they're all nuns before you meet them, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not oh, yeah. going to happen. My favorite is, well, I haven't been in a relationship. I've been single for three years. Uh -huh. Doesn't mean you weren't getting spit roasted every night. Yeah, yeah. Tell me another one. I mean, while I was on my seven-year hi hiatus, I mean, every once in a while it would just drop into my lap. Yeah, You just were, you weren't dating. I wasn't even looking you, for, I was not looking for it. It doesn't mean I was not chasing it. it. I was not dating. Yeah, I was literally living my life, doing my own goddamn thing, and every once in a while, you're at the grocery store, you bump into some chick. Hey, how's it going? Hey, oh, yeah. hit it, quit it, park, stop it, neutral, slam it, run it through all the gears, flip it over, bend the frame, and then leave it dripping fluid from the radiator and tailpipe in a ditch outside of Section Eight housing where you found it. Bingo! <laughs> what do I win? Nothing. Oh, fuck. Yeah, you win the ghost. I win the ghost. <laughs> 
you asshole. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Billy's very big into the paranormal stuff, but we are kind of getting on toward the end of the show. But you did send me a few EVPs. That oh you yeah, recorded. let's 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 listen to some of those. Yeah. I'm I'm very interested here. Let's bring these up. I know I transferred them over to a folder so we can take a listen. Here this we go. Was, uh, this at one a is psychiatric center. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is uh, an MP3 titled "Laughing." So let's take a listen here. Let them know you're here. You hear that little child laugh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, return. Oh yeah. So I was using uh, Obvious, and it put on you know it puts words on a screen, uh-huh. and it said return. And after I said that, you'll hear a voice say return. Ooh. And this was like right next to that creeped me out. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Return. return. They come back. Wow. They come back. Wow. Ooh. Creepy. That's some good shit, man. Uh, this next one here is called Students. Are any students here? So it sounds like whispering. Oof. It's like a dis- it sounds like a distant whispering. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one is very clear. I remember listening to this one. I thought, wow. Oh, yeah. This is. Uh, Use I... the Roof is this, the title of this clip here. All right. Yeah. Make some noise. Use the roof. Oh, my God. That's Use not. The roof. Yeah, that's uh, that's not that's loud enough to not technically be an EVP. That's actually um, a, a, a voice recording. Huh. Did not hear that as it was happening. You did not hear it in real time. Okay, then maybe didn't was. hear it. If you if if you can hear them in real time, it's not an EVP. Oof. Yeah, that is fucking some scary ass shit. Got a lot. Where was this a, at? A, a psychiatric center in New York. It was uh. it's closed. They've been trying to do stuff with it, but. Literally, workers go running out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Yeah. Where's this at? Where's it located? Uh, up in the Hudson Valley. Oh, in New York? Is yeah, that Red York. Trash area or a different area? No, no, that's <laughs> Red Trash area. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I've, upstate New York, is. it was amazing when I went there because I, I saw shit that just, I'd never seen anywhere else. Dun, dun, dun. It was fucking nuts. If their gun laws weren't so stupid... And their taxes weren't all fucked up. It's actually not place, not a bad place to live. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if you guys ever do the whole ghost hunting thing, I'll be totally down for that. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Gotta love it. Um, looking for Reaper Zero One says Blake, check your email. I'm checking my email. There's nothing here, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> bruh. Bruh. Let me try spam just in case. No. So how long have you been either. doing the ghost hunting thing? Uh, about four years. A lot of it is just, you know, finding an abandoned building and going in and just hitting record on your phone and seeing you, what you come up with. Now, you don't go in there by yourself, do you? Sometimes I will, yeah. Yeah, that's not advisable, bro. I know, <laughs> I know. It doesn't, but, it, you know, stuff doesn't bother me. No, it's... Like, it, I it's, don't get creeped out. No, no, much. it's not the stuff. But, like, for instance, you know, when we used to do... Uh, Mount training, which stands for urban warfare, you know, mm-hmm. mounted urban or urban warfare, where you do building to building fighting, and uh, we actually did some of that in older abandoned buildings because they're they were slated to get torn down, and it was actually um, a suburb of, I believe, Atlanta, Georgia, and we literally had people put their legs through the floor, fall through walls have you know stairs like one of the stairs just drop out and if you're there by yourself it doesn't take that much to snap your leg or get stuck in there and then you're fucked because you're by yourself and now become one of the ghosts yeah and, and <laughs> yeah and another thing is like yeah. if you're gonna go out hiking you know don't go fucking hiking by yourself you get hurt you're, you know, you're done it's yeah. a done deal for you but yeah, I mean, uh, I would like to do the ghost hunting thing. I- I'm not going to do the Ouija board. I'm not talking to these no. motherfuckers. I'll just set up the cameras, oh. walk around, maybe ask some questions, take my footage, get the fuck out of there. I did Ouija board in high school. Ooh. And yeah, and we set, we, uh, thing was acting crazy. 
He put it away, left the room, came back an hour later. Nobody had gone in there since we had left. And uh-huh. the thing was set back up again. It was like, okay. Yeah. Either somebody's fucking with us or. Or somebody's fucking with Or something is fucking with you. <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. Did so, you, do we get another Wango so, Tango? We got a Wango you, Tango. All right, read it. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. All right, I'm just preparing a butt because apparently we're going to need one here. All right. Reaper01, this older chick I just met brought me to her house. Nothing has happened yet, but it's pretty clear by her fawning all over me, rubbing my hand on her ass, etc. The thing that she is, she gave me her number within five minutes and doesn't know my real name. I'm John Doe to her. She's a single mother, so hit it and quit it. I'll update you. All right. <laughs> That's actually fairly common. It's fairly common. Yeah. We got some. We got a whole library of fake names. I need to just post that bit so you guys can, uh, you guys can pass that one out. Kringlebert Fisty Buns. How you doing? No, I had one of my buddies when I was up in New York. He had like an arrangement with this woman. And every now and again, he would go shopping and she'd be there shopping. And they'd go back afterwards to her minivan in the parking lot and he would bang her. She was like married with like three kids. It was fucking insane. Well, I'm like, dude, you're gonna get fucking shot. Right? Yeah, that's how you get shot. He's like, well, you know, this is red. Na- this is red trash area, so anything's game. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you if, get a dick one. Got, what? If you guys ever have me back on, we'll have to go over some uh, some of the crazy stories of people I've met with the dating stuff. Oh man. Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna be doing a whole stream on. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, kinks that go too far. Yep. And string along and sling backs. Uh, just na- just any kind of crazy woman story, these, if you have. Yeah. Oh, I had one that was a hoarder. I didn't know she oh. was a hoarder. <laughs> we go back to her place, and it was like, whoa, <laughs> yep. I'm out of here. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a war hoarder. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it happens. Yeah. Uh, last super chat of the day here over on Odyssey Loyal Nine. Hey Pop, if you feel I'm worthy, I would be honored if you checked out my deep dive anti-communist videos. I have a playlist on YouTube. Keep up the great work. Should check right. it out. Write send it in the brain. Us. Loyal Nine. Well, hang on. Send us an email to yep. redonkulous12 gmail.com. Boom. Uh, just restate what you said here and put some links to some of your videos, and I will check them out. Yes. Um. Make I mean, sure it goes in the chat so we can cut and paste. Yeah, I technically, well, I get like uh, probably anywhere from 25 to 75, sometimes more, maybe 100 emails a day. It's quite a lot. Yeah, and I go through them as efficiently as I can. A lot of people will say nothing and just send me a video link, and that link is like 40 minutes long. I, 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 I don't time have that time of the day to read it, to look at all <laughs> these. I just don't. Yeah. All right, I think that is the last Super Chat of the day. Uh, you guys can f- find Billy Von Baum on YouTube. There is a link in the Meat Gazer box to his channel, and I think one of the wrenches also found it earlier. If you want to throw it back into the chat, you guys can thank give you, it a click. You. All right, now, tomorrow, tomorrow. I, I have a confirmation. We are going to have a real-life drone operator yes. who's done it overseas. Yep. And we're going to talk about that, and I have videos um, that we're going – well, these videos are already on YouTube, and I'm going to have him – You know, we're going to talk about, as, talk about them as we play them. Yes. And this is the future of warfare, and this shit is terrifying. Yeah. Usually Thursday streams are for supporters only, but because we've tried to get this guest on the show now for, what, three weeks? Yeah. We're well, opening it up to everybody, so we will be here tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Be there or be rectangular. Excellent. Yes. And uh, from what I understand, Billy Von Baum has his own safety briefing. I do. I do. Well, you know, I hope this isn't going to be too serious, but, you no. know, there's a lot of depression in the world and there's a lot of people feeling, you know, Fucked all up. the stuff that's going on with the stupid the facts and the, all this stuff. So this came to me last night and I hope it's not too heavy duty, but, you know, I channeled Winston Churchill. I kind of, so I'm going to have to do a British accent for it. I hope it's, again, I hope I don't fuck it up. So here we go. A call to all men here on land and to all ships at sea. We're at war. 
a war without guns and bullets, but a war of words, a war of ideas, a war against our nature, a war against our sovereignty, a war against our very humanity, a war not fought on battlefields or far-flung places, but a war being carried out against our minds and bodies by a darkness that has enveloped the globe. These forces seek to enslave you, subjugate you, and take away your rights, not granted by the state, but by God himself. And though there may be temptation to give in to these forces as the fight may seem hopeless, I implore you to resist. Resist the hands of tyranny that threaten to put you in the chains of oppression. We shall resist them on the seas. We shall resist them on the lands. We shall resist with growing confidence and strength. We shall resist in the hills and in the streets. Wherever the hands of tyranny may be, we shall resist. We shall never surrender until, in God's good time, the old world's values and moralities step forward from the darkness to liberate the new. Stay resilient, stay strong, and carry on. I love it. Yes, you got to send that. Send that to me as a text message, man, or as a you know text file. So we we might actually do a fucking show on or a, a quick video on that. That's hell that's yeah, fucking man. Awesome. I like it, and I think we we cannot leave it at that. We have to do a pop safety briefing. All right, everybody, don't drink and drive, and don't drink and swim because people who drink and swim die. If you're gonna fight, <laughs> don't go to the ground because that's where you get stomped out and you die. If you're going to defend yourself. Uh, and um, you have a weapon that you're legally allowed to possess, uh, shoot to kill, not wound, because that's how you get sued to death and you die. <laughs> if you're going to go out and uh, become a free-range fornicator, wear a condom, take it with you, or flush it down the toilet and watch it go all the way down. Absolutely. Or you die. I want to extend a big thank you to Billy Von Baum. Again, his channel <laughs> thank link Thank you for is- having me, guys. Thank channel you. link is in the description. Subscribe to his channel because I said so. All right. How many people we have here before we check out? 500 still at the checkout. Thank you all very much for tuning in today. And don't forget, we will be back tomorrow night with a special public stream. And uh, I think I'm just going to leave you guys with Fat Punisher for the day because it seems like a good idea. And now performing another classical work, The Great Wackerotti. Oh, God, this is making me burp like a motherfucker. Uh, uh.